decades. And, you know, luck is something that's important for an intraday trader. There's a couple of years right here, 2002, 2009. I thought they were probably too hard for new traders to begin. I wrote about this the other day. This is the time right now you need to make more. You need to make more. Today was a day, honestly, you need to make more money. You did. It was a big opportunity. And if you didn't, well, why not? And we're going to find some place for you to actually make some more, more money in. So, all right. So, you know, definitely an example of us utilizing a growth mindset by looking for some place we can co-opt. And we're going to talk about our playbook. Plays that make sense to you. All right. These are some plays from our desk. So how do we make trading decisions? We make trading decisions based on three factors. Intraday fundamentals, technical analysis, and reading the tape. What are those three things? Well, read this book. <laughs> this is actually a good book, and I talk about all three of them in the Stock Quiz Edge. But, but for us, intraday fundamentals are stocks in play, stocks with fresh news, stocks with unexpected news, up or down 3%. If you're looking for a cheat sheet, stocks with news that will cause a significant intraday move. Examples, handily beating the revenues to the full year, improved margins, market share, new drug, new product. Those are the key words that we're looking for and that catch our attention. These offer increased intraday opportunities. They trend cleaner. They're more liquid. All right, they're going to move more than other stocks intraday, and our job is to be efficient with our capital. I think the order flow tends to be easier to read. Reading the tape is easier with stocks in play. Technical analysis, we don't just want to find a stock in play and bang away at it. We want to understand where the long-term support and resistance levels are for a particular stock. We want to know where the intraday support and resistance levels are for that stock. We want to follow the intraday trend. It is best when our long-term levels and our intraday levels are all lining up. Reading the tape. Where are the inflection points? Where are the big battles? We want to trade off of them. All right, and so for my favorite trade, um, I'm putting together all three of these to make a trade. All right, so we're going to talk about some setups. We're going to run through perhaps, uh, you know, intro fundamentals, reading the tape, and technical analysis. Shark's actually just going to do this from today, right? I thought this would be more interesting to actually just show some tape from today, but we'll talk about it in, in, in terms of intraday fundamentals, long-term technicals, reading the tape, and he'll show you a trade that he caught on the open. It was an opening drive play? Yeah. Well, you talk. I don't know why I thought. Okay. Um, I'm going to share a trade from Citigroup today on the open. Uh, can we bring up a 10-day chart maybe of City? Uh, I guess the uh, intraday fundamentals, there wasn't any unexpected news in the stock. It was just more of uh, the market was in play. Um, but that's, a big, that's a big thing, though, right, which is overall we came in and we gapped down 2.5%, two and two and right, right. right? And, you know, I, I look for and this things. And this is one of the market stocks you're trading, right? Exactly. This is the one that I've been trading the last few weeks, had, had success with. I understand the way it moves more. I like, I like trading things with tight spreads, so this is uh, kind of the, the thing that I go to. And this has been moving pretty well with the market, right? I mean, when we're yeah. trading, we've been saying that when the market is moving so much intraday that you want to trade the ETFs or you want to trade market stocks. And this is certain. This is one of your market stocks that you're going to, right? Right. So, you know, I, I was trading over in these days, and I knew that this 2850, you can see from these wicks, you know, pretty important level. Um, you know, below there, I thought 28 was a little bit of a level pre-market one of these days. Um, but I was really looking at this 28.50 level, and uh, it just happened to set up pretty pretty perfectly right in the open for uh, an opening drive play. So I guess we can... Let me get that back. All right, so want to watch the tape of this? Yeah. And, you know... Probably pretty much don't ask for anything better than this. I'm actually pretty upset with uh, you know how little I made, even though I made okay. a good let's, good. let's talk about that. All right, we're gonna have to fast forward a little bit. 
So this is the idea for this is we're looking waiting for it to get below the 2850, right? Right. And are you looking for the market to be weak as well with that? Um for sure long. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at this, the market if it's below uh, you know 117 and going down the open. Definitely want to be aggressively uh, short stocks. What time is this? This is 9:32. Uh, I was looking at NTAP as my primary stock, but I have City to stud. I'm looking at this one particular level. And you see, I flip over to it. All right, so. So right at that level. See the spies up here uh, opening up, starting to take a little bit down, right? So, should be getting that. It's pretty short here. That 116.40 was really the level, though, right? We were kind of going up and above and below that 116.50, right? And then we wanted to actually take it, it kind of went above it, went below it, and then it actually came down and it held 116.40 first time on the spiders. <clears throat> and you know, my problem here is really my mind state. Instead of, you know, I should be thinking, get bigger, get bigger, get bigger, get one to the level. I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking about, they short my on. risk. I, I, you know, I'm short. Just can't say. Yeah. Right, so to me, that was, it, it just stop the tape here. Like to me, the trade is this. We stop the tape. So to me, the trade is, we've got a market that's very much in play. We've got a market that's very much in play. This is a market play. Right, this is not a stock in play play. And we open, and you want to watch what happens, whether the market is going up or down right on the open, and you want to actually play the momentum because we're down so much. This, the market can go up or can go down from these levels. And so what happened was 116.50 became right on the open an inflection point. And so when you have a price in city at 2850, and when you have a an inflection point in the market at 116.50, what you what you to me the play is can I see the spiders pull below 116.40, and can I see Citigroup pull below 28.50, and if I can see that, then I want to play for a drive to the downside, right? Right. So that's what I'm looking for, and and you're right. Uh, and I think that this is one of those times, on the morning was one of those times where you actually wanted to take on more risk. Right. It was a little bit whippy in the spiders right on the open. I think we got below it once and, and some of us got short and we we went above the level and maybe some of us got long and went below the level. It was, it was tiny bit whippy, but because we were down so much, because we, we said this on Monday, right? The quiet before the storm. And it was in a row where we didn't really do anything, and it just felt like it felt wrong. Yeah. And even actually last night, if you were reading the commentary, it was like, oh, to the summer, we're actually going to go up, and it's not going to be until after Labor Day before a lot of people are interested and we'll have a new sell-off. And, and too many people started saying that. And I just, from a trading perspective, it just didn't feel right. It was just, you know, there was so much negativity, and we came back 10%. So... You know, Jimin did a really nice job this morning talking about look for the weakness. And, you know, we've talked about this before that we want to actually look for the sharp down moves. And if we start to see that, then let's trade from the short side. So this was this was a different day than the last, it's Friday, right? Completely different old at the start. Um, Much more volatility than pre market. Yeah. So, which is good. yeah. so your job in a market like this, what? Like, what's the old Peter? Like, what's the theme on a day like today? Um, you want to make a lot of trades and go with the short-term momentum. Okay, you definitely want to trade with the short-term momentum. Excellent. Greg, right, what else? Um, you want to follow the trend of the overall market. Okay. Um, I think I don't think that's right. I think Peter was we, as intraday traders. We want to follow 
the short-term momentum. So wherever the last battle was, where's the next move, up or down? All right. What else? What's, what are we thinking about? Yes. We're going to make it bigger. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the over. That's the idea. Is that this is one of those days where your job is to be as big as you possibly can, such that we don't fire you, and such that you are responsibly short in this case. How big can you be and be responsibly short? And if you're not big enough, you're not doing your job. If you could have been shorter on a day like today, you're not doing your job. And to be honest, you'll see in this tape, there's about four very clear spots to add. And, and I do, you know, add during the trade, but I should have been, st I started with 800 shares. I should have been adding 1,200, 1,600, 2,000. And I only get up to like a thousand, and it's already into, into the book. So, you know, I'll point that out as it as it goes. Um, how do I play this? All right, so it's going down, and what you'll see is it really can't get above thirty-five cents. So, you know, I eventually add, but so you're thinking, should I light it up? Yeah, I, I, that's what that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Instead of, but you know, I lighten up, but I, I get back in to pretty much what I had. Yeah, I think as long as we're below this sixteen fifty, I think I saw that little spike up in the spice, and I'm you know I'm playing more like with the spice. So that's that's safe, yeah. you know. So as long as the, the spies are not below are below sixteen fifty, or not holding above sixteen fifty, you, right. you do want to you did lighten up, didn't you? Yeah, so um, I think I just added a couple hundred shares, <laughs> kind of like that one tier right now. Hey, it's not terrible lighten up. I mean, it's not like we moved that far away from one sixteen fifty. It's right. the first move. So it, if you want to lighten up, it's fine. You just got to get back in. Yep. And now you'll see one spot where I really do miss the ad. Here is uh same thing kind of happens at fifteen cents. It just can't get above fifteen cents, and it's pretty much should be you know like four hundred shares that I add right here. What price? Right, just anywhere right here, 13, 14, 12, again, it's 15 cents. But you see, I had my bid box in the, to cover instead. Yeah, one of the things you're looking for is the bottom for the spiders. It would be it would be easier if we were through the bottom of the spiders, holding below the, the bottom of that, that last down of red. That would certainly give us a little bit more uh, confidence that we should be sure. Um, but that was a little. That, that actually that was a little bit weaker than the overall market. And right? the financials have been the weakest sector overall for quite some time. Right. Now we're starting to get towards the low of the day in the spiders. That should be it. But that to me right there is where you got to get shorter. Right. So there's absolutely that 13 cents right there. There was like that one split second. Right. You got to be shorter. Um, and then now you'll see this, this 28 I had as a level in my mind as far as city, although the market is showing the weakness and there's a lot of size on the bid, but. Doesn't really uptick, so I do a good job of not covering any here. Doesn't get above two cents, and I actually add once this uh, size is taken out. Okay. So that's so, good. I like your mindset, which is how do I get shorter? So now, um, you know, I want it to speed up and and I'm looking to take covers into the down move. Any sort of quick, you know, it goes down too fast, that's kind of where I'm looking. I think I took off 200 shares at a cost. Oh, that should have been a hold though. All right, that's uh, it. some there. Yeah. That's, that, that was a good cover there at 66. Now I'm down to like you know, two thirds of a tier or a tier. Does everyone cool. understand that? So you, you can lighten up if it's too steep. And then you want to, you really do want to then offer up though, right? You lighten up. I thought that 66 was too steep. Maybe you want to try and offer up 80, 89 or something like that. And then hold your core. I think you're too light here though. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is. 200 and that, that was really, there's no reason. <clears throat> this is like. It's, Overall, I should be still holding like five or six hundred shares. Hasn't really shown any sign of strength at all. And the market just continuing to go down. Yeah. And this 2750 is a level, right? I think this was a little bit of a level. I 
No, maybe I'm wrong. That maybe I was thinking of Morgan Stanley at fifteen fifty. I got confused. But uh, I've been trading steady the last couple weeks, and average fifty cents it seems to be low, low, pretty much. Yeah, this is good. I mean, to me, uh, my question for you is, where would you love the short? I mean, I'm definitely going to reshort into the 80s. Right. Um, I got. You know, I got. The question is, do you want to? Yeah. Uh, you're too light there. I mean, you, you should have been. A, you need a. You need a core here, right? Yeah. I was thinking this, the market finally had uh, put a green bar in for for a few seconds there. You couldn't get below 50 cents, but I still, you know, I still should be holding a core like 300 shares. And now it's just getting like really steep to me. I got out there. Still should be holding some. It goes down another 30, 40 cents. But that's pretty much Alright, so look, that's the opening drive. Opening drive play is that was the specific opening drive play, which is uh, stocks below level, markets below level, you get short and you hold it until it, the momentum stops to the downside. Um, good. It's definitely a good trade. And and, and um, that's a responsible trade because you actually have the market and a price on on your side as opposed to just looking at a market stock and just hitting it because the market is going down. <clears throat> I mean, this is better because it's below an important price, right? That's a very, very effective trade in this market. I would actually even suggest that's a better trade than trading the spiders. I, mean, I actually think that's a better trade than getting short below 116.40. And you can see it in the chart. I mean. So it's just straight down. Yeah. So, very good trick. All right, any questions? Sure, any questions for you? No? Looking. Excellent. Uh, who's next? Alex. I think it's a Word document. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, my playbook sheet for RIM. Uh, it was August 15th. So this is the template. So when we talked about the playbook, Alex, this is what we go through, right? Yep. All of them, all the playbooks kind of have the same title and then the same little sections, name of the play, big picture, intraday fundamentals, technicals, but we'll go through it. So this play is just something, I, it's a play I was in that I wanted to just keep in mind for any time I see the same sort of setup. Um, does it worked for me, it made, it made sense to me. So the play is a buyer near resistance and a breakout of a basing pattern. It, I'll, just, I'll go through it. So RIM basically, well the big picture was that uh, SPY uh, at 119. That was a resistance level that turned into support. And this, spy, and this was before today, right? Yeah, this was before today. So, uh, yeah, so Steve wrote a blog about this, which is this 119 and the spiders before today had been a level we bounced off of twice, right? Mm -hmm. And before, before that, it had actually been on the resistance level, and then I started to hold above it, and so it became support, and then it certainly became support because twice this week, we've actually bounced off of that 119 level. Yeah, and basically like around this time, we were looking for just stocks that I don't know, they might have gone down too much or just kind of things that were moving separately from the market, the correlations finally coming off a bit. This was this only lasted a couple of days, but that was kind of the theme at the time. So as long as the spies were holding by 118, uh, that was a check for any long long positions that you're in. Um, the intraday fundamentals, Google announced the buyout of MMI, so that was lifting a bunch of the uh, mobile names. So right in pre-market we saw we saw RIM, Nokia, uh, Verizon, uh, they were all just gapping up higher that day. And at the time, right off the open, RIM had an IPR above three. So I like to always check that just in case because a lot of the names were, were gapping up, but you still want to see if they're, they actually have good order flow in them. And they would not. So what do you mean by IPR for those of us who do not know what that means? That is on SMB radar. So. <laughs> All right, so the SME radar is a tool that we use in house, right? Yep. Um, and so, what is I just what is the IPR? Well, yeah, IPR stands for in play ranking. So it's basically the radar is is always scanning the markets and going through just like every single tick in the stocks that um, are in our tradable universe to let us know if they're actually in play and they have fresh order flow, so that it's uh, it gives us higher probability on our side. What's a good score? 
uh, above three. Just as long as it's above three, you're, you're good to go, basically. So that was another check for me. Um, so then technical analysis. RIM had sold off from its gap down, you can see here on the chart. It's just been in a major downtrend for a few months now. And it just really didn't have any any serious updates in months. So this could have been to us the catalyst that at least gives it one good update. So it broke it broke out of its daily downtrend on volume. Why do you say that? Why do you say this could be the day that why do you say this catalyst might actually help us out? Because it was the, the news was good for its sector and Usually a stock that's that's just super. It seems that people don't know as much as you do. So why was the news potentially good for the sector? Because there was a buyout in a, in a similar in, with their peer basically. So if that if another company is looking, if Google thinks MMI is worth a lot more than it was just trading at, there's a possibility that RIM is worth a lot more than it's trading at. So just that comparison gets I guess funds or whoever it is interested in the stock. And basically, look, we're not going to really believe that. RIM, after being in such a strong downtrend, you, you don't want to really play the long side unless you actually have a good catalyst like that. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so you, let me ask you this though. I mean, if I look at that chart, I can actually see that as a chart play right. as well, right? Yeah. But you actually are using the fact that there's news in it as well to in volume. In volume to supplement your idea. Yeah, right. Yep. So it's not just the, it's not just technically it's above level. It's the news too. Yeah. Okay. So then, besides that, we had some levels, uh, uh, twenty seven thirty to twenty eight. So it's right around here in the chart. Were important levels to me. In the areas of resistance. Uh, and twenty five eighty was intraday resistance, and it failed there twice on the open. So I gave that level a six out of ten. And so, why are you giving it levels? Why are you giving it? Why are you saying it's a 6 out of 10? Why is that important to you? Or why is that important to us? Why do we do that? Do you want me to answer? Yeah. Okay. Um, Does anyone else want to answer that? All right. We'll let you answer that. <laughs> um, well, yeah, that level is important to us because it gives us basically a, a, an edge. I mean, we have, uh, we've been watching it and trading it on the Why end. do we score the levels? Why do you have 6 out of 10? Why do you do that? Why isn't just the level? It's like, Yes, it is. Not all levels are created equal. Okay, so not all levels are created equal. Yes. Yeah, so what else? What's determine your risk? Like how, how much size you want to put on yeah. relative to the stop. Yeah, out. exactly. I think that if the level was really important to you, you'd want to take on more risk, right? And you're going to trade a level differently. So if we love the level, let's say we thought the level was a nine out of ten. Let's say we thought it was a broker decker. It might even be a 10, she's probably a 10. Who's a 9 out of 10? Kato. 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 So let's just say she's a 9 out of 10. Looks like a TV actress. Mila Kotis is a 9. She'd be like a 9. That's a good example of a 9. Alright, so... We that'd be a high though. We really like that play. And what we might do is number one, we might trade with more size, right? And we also might actually wait for the stock if we go long it to hold the low level on the tape as opposed to just tick below the level. So let's say 30 is a big level, um, it's a nine out of ten. We might actually say to ourselves, we're going to buy 3003. And we're not selling it until it actually holds below 30. If we thought the level was a four or a five, okay, it would be a four or a five. Karen, <laughs> <Terrible. laughs> <laughs> uh, he's also a male. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's a four. <laughs> he might be a negative. <laughs> So, uh, so somebody not as attractive, uh, we would probably say something like, well, if it picks below 30, we're out. And then and also we probably have size, right? So the 9 out of 10, we'd probably be like, big size, it's got a hold below the level, and we actually probably expect it to even go up more. Probably it's 
probably more of a trade to hold for us, hold it longer, and then less of a level, we're gonna we're gonna make that adjustment. All right, go ahead. Okay, so it's intraday, I guess, the technicals. Uh, so intraday reinformed this basin pattern that took up the better part of the day and until about 2 p.m., which is where we saw it at 25.80, which is the intraday level we were looking at, and it was also holding the view up, which right right on the open, on the immediate open, we were playing it kind of actually to, to the short side, scalping it, because it kept getting rejected right here at view up. Um, so the play is basically a, a lot more, but also, sorry, it got, it got really tight here against uh, the resistance level, against 25.80. So I, I always like that because then I actually know where my real out is. What do you mean by it's getting tight near 25 by The bids are stepping up and the offers are, are getting, are just kind of holding there. And there's a little bit of a battle going on basically. Okay, and is it holding close to the top of the consolidation? So is it holding, if 25.80 is a level, we want it to be actually holding close to 25.80 at like 78 cents, right? Right. And the closer it's actually holding to that resistance level, what do we think? The more likely it's going to break out. Okay, good. So that's important. Everyone understand that, right? Yeah. So, good. Good. Excellent. Good setup. Good. And then volume also came in, so that also confirmed it because you really don't want to trust the breakout if it's in the middle of the day and there's no volume. That's usually going to be a shakeout. Um, so then reading the tape, Good, so you see the volume spike there, right? See the volume, there's a little arrow there, and there's an increase, there's increased volume, and it's close to the resistance level, it's holding higher, this is good. This is a very good technical setup. So as far as the tape, these are just notes on kind of how I was trading. It was pretty tricky for most of the day. Just you, you would always kind of try and trick you. The offers would start getting paid really aggressively, and then you wouldn't see a bid step up with it, so then it would just, it, it looked really aggressive, like it's about to just rip up the upside, and then they'll just knock it down 10, 15 steps quickly. Um, so to use the tape, you really have to, to get, have conviction in your play and just buy the stock on the bid rather than paying for it. Um, this is like kind of just notes, not so much how I, not so much the play that I was in, but even then. Well, oh man, the first question to me is, the first question I'm thinking to myself here is what? I'm sitting here watching this pattern. Think, let's 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 think through what we should be thinking about. So you're sitting there. You need to be planning a trade, right? So plan with me. What are we thinking, Jeff? What do you think? What am I going to do if it gets above it's eighty cents? Yeah. Think it. All right. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what you should be thinking. What am I going to do if it gets above 80 cents? And there's two choices there, right? What are the two choices? A, and see if it goes right away or if it doesn't. Playing the momentum for the breakout. If okay, so your, your first choice is do I want to play the momentum, right? If I'm going to play the momentum, that means if it takes 81 cents, I do what? You pay for it right away. And then if it goes off and slows, he takes them off. Good. All right. And then, what's the other way to actually trade this play? Is it trade to hold, or possibly until an uptrend breaks? Or okay. So you can you can and, it's trend and you can get in the same way. You get in the same way. Well, you can bid for some, bid for some, or this is this is important. Okay. Because this is exactly what you're going to be thinking about. This is exactly what you got to think about before you get in. All right. So it takes 81 cents. You've got a choice. You can play momentum. That's one trade. Okay, if the level's really, really important and it's uh, an eight out of ten, I think you got to pay the offer, and you got to actually be in it. Why? Because there's too much risk not to be in it. Very good. All right. If it goes up fifty cents pretty quickly, you might take it off. If you do so, you might be a momentum trade, or you can just immediately trade it as a trade to hold, which means you're long, and it's actually now got to give you a reason to sell. That might be it breaks, that might mean it breaks the downtrend, it breaks an uptrend on a five minute chart or a longer term chart, it goes and finds a, a ridiculous level much higher. It's, it's a long term trade. And the other thing you got to think about is, do I actually want to see it hold? 
of a big sense. And, and, and this is important. You can't think about this while you're in the middle of the trade. This is too much to think about. There's too much information coming into the marketplace. You have to be sitting there as it's actually consolidating, close to the resistance area, and saying to yourself, what am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with that? You want to have a bunch of if-then statements, and you want to agree. Right? You want to become clear in your mind exactly what you're going to do. You can't sit there and say, I'm going to buy the stock at 81 cents, but not be crystal clear whether or not it's a trade to hold or a momentum trade. You can sit there as it takes 81 cents and say, should I buy it or should I actually wait for the stock to hold above the level? You can't do that. You'll be paralyzed with an inability to actually make the trade. All right? And so, you know, that's the first part of the thinking. And so, you know, in a, in a case like this, I think we all, I mean, I'm getting along. It's 81 cents, I'm getting long. But there's another way to trade it, which is you wait for it to hold above 80 cents. If it holds above 80 cents and you get long, there really is only one way to play it. What's that way? It's a trade to hold, right? It's not a momentum trade then, right? It's If I actually wait for this stock to hold above if I'm actually waiting for rent to hold above 80 cents, and it does, and it holds 85 cents on the bid, and there's a lot of volume, and it goes up to through the through the whole number and five cents, and there's a little bit of selling, and it's having a little bit of trouble getting through 05, and you get flat, that's wrong. That's you being a wuss. That's not good trading. That's not good fundamentals. That's not good preparation. And, and when we think about this trade, there's actually other things you need to think about. And you need to think about this actually before it happens. All right, which is, well, what are you going to do if it goes 81 cents, you get long? We see this all the time. And there was a couple of days ago where there were great plays on the short side. We talked about this specifically, all right? What are you going to do if you pay 81 cents? Okay? It doesn't go up right away, and then it gets below 80 cents. What are you going to do? You're going to hit out of it, right? But is that the end of the trade? Is that like, oh, I lost. Maybe maybe lost. I lost. This stinks. I'm mad. I'm going to I'm going to yell. I'm going to bang my, my, you know, I'm pissed. I can't believe this trade didn't work out. I stink. I suck. What am I doing? I should have been in some other stock. You know, are you thinking that? But I'm going to tell I'm, I actually, I want to make this point. 95% of the people trade, that's what they're thinking. They're thinking, this doesn't work out. This is crap. I can't believe it. Here we go again. This isn't going to, why did that go up right away? And they're, they're lost in, in these thoughts that have nothing to do with them making money and are going to take away from their ability to make the next good trade. The only thing you should be thinking about, and I got on somebody on the desk for actually saying this today because they screwed up a trade. And you know they got they got wicked out of something, and they missed the next trade. It, it happens all the time, and people you can't do it. You get out of the stock, you take your loss, and what is your next immediate thought? How do I get? What's the next good long? What's the next good trade? That's the only thing you should be thinking about. And if you are actually sitting there and you're catching yourself having any other thoughts, then if it, it doesn't go down, and they hold it above 80 cents. I'm getting back in, and I'm going to get out below the wick. All right, so let's say that we bought 81 cents, and it went down, and we got stopped out at 70, 78 cents, and it wicked down to 74 cents, and it holds above 80 cents. What's the trade? Long, and where's the, where's the stop? Below the bottom of the wick. Okay? That's it. That's the only thing you should be thinking about. How many people in this room are going to be honest enough to tell me that when they actually get shaken out the first time, that is exactly what they think about? I, I actually forgot my question, so I don't think I actually said my question right well. Well, but how many people would like to admit that they get long, they get out of it, and they spend some time regretting 
are feeling far, sorry for themselves, or having any other thoughts other than where do I get back in. That, that's, yeah, and that's, that, that can't happen, right? And I think the rest of you are lying. <laughs> so, the people listening, <laughs> did you raise your hand? Yes, that definitely happened. But did you raise your hand? No. <laughs> Who else didn't raise their hand? Raise their hand. <laughs> <laughs> friends, I, friends, you've never actually had those thoughts. You're a machine. You just sit there and you're like, I'm long 81, I'm out 79. Um, and again, if it holds a buddy, look at that. They just shook me out at 74 cents. I can look at other trade. I just wait a little bit. You gotta get out. That's a trade. That's worse. So now you're. <laughs> Trade. <laughs> I mean, if you make a momentum trade and you buy the stock at 81 cents and it takes 79 cents or 78 cents, whatever your out is, you gotta get out. That's a trade. That's a momentum trade. So if it's a trade to hold, you might say, I'm in 81 cents, it's gotta hold below 75 cents for me to get out. Alright? But we but don't change the trade down there. There's a great, there's really a good expression that goes something like, when you're in a hole, stop digging. <laughs> so, when you're in a hole, stop digging. <laughs> All right, so, um, so the, and those are the things you got to start thinking. You got to think about that right, at a minimum, at a minimum. And, and you, know, you got to think about other things, like Jeff. I think there's one other really big thing that I'd be thinking about in this trip. It's very important, all right? Particularly on a day like today, we should have had a lot of these thoughts, which is what? Bigger. Yeah, and you, you actually want to see in your mind examples of how you would get bigger. All right, so for me, well, give me an example of something that would get you bigger. This old is called 80 cents. Perfect, yeah. Uh, to me, I'd be like, I'd actually see myself get, getting longer if the bid held 85 on the bid. And, and I'd map out before the trade, before the first trade, I'd map out what I want to see to get bigger. And that makes it easier to get bigger, right? You're sitting there and you're like, oh, okay, I sold my bid at 85 cents. I told myself to get bigger if he held the bid at 85 cents. What's my job? To get bigger. This is one of those plays. My job is to responsibly be as big as I possibly can be, right? That's my job. Job's not to be scared that if I get bigger, I may lose money. These are the good plays. Okay. So, yeah. So basically, what the rest of the says is that the tape kind of changes as it got as the volume came in here, and the bids actually started to stick, which was really unusual. So that gave you that gave you a chance to actually get it. Right before the breakout, I don't know how like everyone kind of has a different style, but I, I I like to do like a little bit of both of what we just talked about. Like I want some lots that are trade to hold, and I want some lots that I'm gonna pay through. I don't, I don't like to just rely on, on one way of being in it. So All right, you can do that too, right? We make it simple. But there is there is another way to do it, which is let's say it gets about eighty one cents, and you buy you can buy multiple lots. And let's say one lot you can treat as a momentum lot, and another lot you can sort of treat as a as a core trade to hold, right? You certainly can do that. Um, but they're different trades, right? You got to treat both of them differently. They have different stops and different rules. Yep. It's fine. So this is a trade management. This is how I played it. So my first lot was I bought with the seventy bit. bit. And then I paid through the 80 cents. And my stop for, for everything was if it's holding below 70. And I'm going to treat some of it as at the momentum. So it holds higher right here at number two. And you could add up. This is like kind of where it, it, the, the guy sticks it again, around 91 cents. All right, well, let me ask you this. It's, it's not above the level, right? Where? At two? It's not above, buy one is, is not above 25.80, right? No. Uh, so give me your reasoning for what buy one there. 
the tape, the basic the tape that I saw something that changed. Big, big level though, right? Mm, it's just intraday. So I it's an intraday level. level. Yeah, it's six out of ten intraday. Okay. Uh, and to me, it was like they had they it just sat there basing out all day. They got everyone thinking it was a short. What was the longer term level that was going to be important to you? Uh, it was around twenty six fifty. Twenty six. Twenty six fifty. Yeah. Um, so we got, so this is a little bit of a different analysis, which is the intraday level is not huge, but it's a level. And so if we see something really, really clean on the tape at 70 cents, that's a reason for us to be long, even though it's below an intraday level, right? We've got the intraday fundamentals on our side, which is there might be a catalyst to drive a room higher today. So you put those together, and this is a good trade, right? To me, I just saw it facing out all day. It was like it could really go off and start moving. So I bought there on the bid with 70 in the 70s, probably like 72, 73. I paid through 80 cents the whole higher, and that's where I just I added my thing. All right, so where does it hold higher? At around 92 cents. Good. And then this is the key. This is the right mindset for this setup. How do I get bigger responsibly? And you found a way, right? Did you, was it responsible? I think it was, yeah. You added, tell me your add and tell me your stop. My add was around 92, my stop was, it was basically holding below 90, so. Are you concerned that you're buying 92 cents and it's eight cents away from a whole number? Not so much. Why not? I thought whole numbers are always resistance lows. Yeah. Well, who yeah. agrees with that statement? Who agrees that whole numbers are always resistance lows? Right? I mean, aren't whole numbers always resistance levels? Sometimes. Okay, so say it out loud, Alex, please. No, they're not always. Okay. Whole numbers are not resistance levels unless they actually are resistance levels. It just happens to be that stocks sometimes stop there, but. Resistance levels are resistance levels, not whole numbers. So don't don't get into that habit of the, the fantasy world of oh my god, it's eight cents away from a whole number, so you're resistant. All right, good. So I'm kind of treating my extra loss. I, I mean, I was I always do this, and maybe it's a problem. But my whenever I'm out above a core position, I'm. I basically treat them almost all as momentum locks, which is, it might not be the right thing to do. So, no, and I, look, the way, right way to trade this, this stock is you start a core above 80 cents, right? right? Yep. And then the next time you actually have a spot to add, you actually add to your core. All right, so let's say that you trade in, let's just say you trade in 1,000 share locks. You get 1,000 as a core above 80. All right, maybe you actually get 1,500. You trade 1,000 and you're holding 1,000. You trade 500 as your momentum lock. Then it goes to 92 cents. All right, and you find another way to get along. All right, but maybe you took off 500 shares because it slowed, and now you find another way, and now you get long 2,000 shares. Now you're long total 2,000 shares. You want to increase your core position from 1,000 shares to perhaps 1,300 shares. And you want to trade the other 700 shares as a trade to hold. All right, especially right at the beginning. So increase your core and and, and trade around that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So right around here, around 26, 20, if it rips right through the whole number, continues to even hold higher, and then you finally get your first red bar. Um, um, I think it's one minute. You can see it in the tape. They finally start to struggle a little bit at 20 cents. It's a little bit different. So you definitely want to sell one tier there to cover your risk. Um, All right. So it's struggling on the tape. So you're going to take some off. Yeah. And then, now, is this, are you going to take some off? You're definitely going to take some off your momentum lot, right? Yeah. Are you going to take some off for your core trade, trade the whole long? It's probably not the right thing to do. You might lighten up. Yeah. It's po it's okay to lighten up, but you got to put it back on if it's if it's above it. 
So if you start to have some trouble, say you're long 1,300 core and has trouble at 2,650, and you say, you know what, I'm going to take off 600, get down to 700 core, but if it holds cleanly above 2,650, which we can see on the chart, 26, 26. This, this is the first area I'm talking about. Okay, I'm sorry, I got to my numbers. Three definitely comes to the poor floor, doesn't it? So, you know, that's not a good, anyway, so you might lighten up and then you, you get back into it, right? Yeah. With your 1300 core, it holds above it. Okay, so then we come up to four, what happens? Yeah. So then we come up to four, it's, at this point, yeah, it's almost up, you know, it's like 70 cents from the breakout. So this is an area where you're going to probably want to lighten up. And I think I actually held on to it because I thought, like, and rock and roll. I was going to make a bunch of money. But, but I actually held through most of this. This is my core position. Um, then it comes back, tests the high again, and has this pull in. So I'm pretty sure that I put my, my stop just below this 40 cents. Okay. And below the consolidation or below the bottom of the consolidation? Yeah. Actually, no, this is what happened. We have this this really fast down bar here, this red down bar. To 30 cents? Yeah, that's what happened. And I held through that, and then I said, if it gets below 30, I'll get it stopped out on some of my position there. Um, and I did. So I got stopped out into this little wick here below okay. 30. Okay. Um, Are you looking at a one-minute chart there or a five-minute chart? Um, I'm looking at both usually at, at this point, but this is a one-minute visit. All right. Um, okay. And then after that, we have here number five, which is where I'm thinking. So what happened? So did you get flat there? No, I didn't get flat. No. You got out of what? Two oh, tiers. Close. So I think I was maybe down to one or, or two max. Okay. Oh, so you were like four tiers long, yeah. did four lots long, you yeah. call lots, long tiers. Um, and then you got stopped out of two lots, so you so you're long two lots. Yeah. What's your core? Is your core long two lots? Yeah. Um, so momentum lot, you, you lost some. Yeah, I, I lost some of the momentum lot here at three, and I lost another one at four. Okay, I've got it. I don't know what I would even call the fourth one, the number four, but I'm stopped out of that. And then it just kind of grinds higher here, which is you know it's good, but it's gone up about a point now from from the breakout without any sort of pullback. So basically, right around twenty, right under twenty six seventy, I'm stopped out of that lot. Uh, just because I'm thinking this thing could really pull back hard um, at this point because it hasn't had any serious pullback yet. And yeah, but why do you think you know? I, that, I don't. Is that a sustainable trading theory? I feel like it happens. I mean, was it was it near a but was it near a level or was it you see something different on the tape? Did you? You can't yeah. just sit there and say. Um, well, I think this is, this is I mean, there has to be a reason why you think this is, it's not vertical there. No, it's not. This is, I think. So if it was vertical there, I might say that. If it was coming towards a really big resistance level, I might say that. If it really started to look different on the tape, I might say that. But, 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 there, would be, but there would be some reason because if you just say, well, the stock's gone up a lot, it might come back. There's going to be a lot of times where... It to go through. It, 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 the continuation pattern continues, I, right? I, so you want to have you want to have a reason. I just felt like the risk reward wasn't really great at that point. But, really but was that because through. you were scared to get back your profits, or was that because there was something in the marketplace that told you that? And don't look at the chart and say, "Well, it went down, so I was right." Right. Because you're going to be in this situation before, and I don't want you to actually miss out on the play where. You think that it's gone to a point, and that and it, and it goes to thirty, and you're not fit. I'm just not sure where I would put my stop. To be so I'm thinking, well, you could put your stop below this twenty six sixty five, right? Yeah. You could put it. There's that consolidation right here at two fifteen, the two twenty five. Can you show that? Can you just can you just show us that on the cursor. So like right here. You might say I'm out below there. Yeah. That's a that, that, that twenty six sixty five area. You might do that. Um, and look, I think 
think if it got too steep, I think you can say, I'm going to take it off. I think if it came to a really important long-term level, I think you can take it off. I think if you saw something very, very different, very, very, very different on tape, you can say that. I just don't know what made you think that. All right, that's all I got. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Um, okay, so six. Spot. So basically, it bounced here um, from forty cents, which you know, kind of makes sense. It was the last consolidation area, and then it starts folding. So you can actually get back in there. And that's where I think this is where you got to be careful about your one-minute charts, your five-minute charts, your fifteen-minute charts. I think. We're really now trading the stock not on a one minute time frame, right? right. It's not the open, it's not an opening drive play. We're in a trade to hold situation, right? We really do want to start to think about longer term charts. So, you know, when we look here on the one minute chart, we might see something broken. If we look on the five minute chart, we might actually see this four area as really the more important validation area. Right. So you want to keep that in mind. Don't use don't use too tight of a time frame um, for a swing trade. Okay. So it starts holding there, which is yeah, it's a reasonable spot for it to bounce. Um, so you could plug it out there. So I add it there, and, and your stop is just below forty cents here. Um, for to me, <clears throat> to me it's for everything. Like I don't want I, at this point. There's no reason to get back anything below forty cents because if, at that point it looks like it could easily retrace this level back back to the breakout. And I might, really, go, maybe, I might go. I might go three quarters, and then a, I might go two thirds, and then a third below thirty cents. Okay. Yeah. It's an idea. Okay. And then, because that thirty cents is the bottom of that wick before, right? Yeah. Two o'clock wick. Yeah. Right. Okay. So after that, I think it had a nice bounce. You want to add? So I, I like to do this almost all the time. Add at the at the new high. Good. So it's holding above the new high. Uh, I just pay because at that point it's holding here. It's not showing weakness, and it gets right through it. It kind of reminded me actually of the first breakout, so I thought I'd definitely have to be in this. And you just trade that as momentum because you know, it's gone up a lot now. You're actually about 50 cents away from the target, so I, tra I treated that one as momentum. And then, so I moved my stop to 27.13, 27. That's up here. I guess the wick low because now it's again it's really close to my target. Um, what was your target? Twenty-seven thirty to twenty-seven fifty. I guess. How'd you come up with that? Is that you come up with that or no? It was a resistance area. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Um, <clears throat> that's a reason to sell the stock, right? Yeah. So it's attacking the level. Good. And then I tried holding on to the rest, so I sold almost down to like maybe one lot. Uh, once the wick's below here. What price? Uh, where's here? 27.13. And after that, it starts to That's Okay, so that was that level where there was a, that was a level there was a lot of buying. Yeah. Was, it was really, there were, there, those were just weak, like weak lows. It was just areas that I could I could think of that it made sense to, to put a stop. Gotcha. Um, so you're using this for me. You're using this validation here. And right. If it gets below there, you're out. Right. Good. And then 9 basically is where to me the play was over. Yeah, the sort of double top right against the resistance. All right, so the double top, uh, show the double top. You got one down. high, can't get above this 27.50. Yeah. And then it can't get above it again, right? Right. And okay. then it's holding below the, those two wicks. Okay. It's holding and below the low of the two wicks. Okay. To me, the play was over. I think we didn't play the short side after this, but that's not part of this question. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> so, my trade review, this is the last thing I usually put on this. I could have traded it much better. Um, so I don't, I'm not even right here looking at this. I, I just botched this play. I made a really good buy that is usually uncomfortable. Around this 2650 level six. Right. So to me, this is it's pretty uncomfortable without seeing the rest of the chart. I, I really think that's just, I really think you should, I think it's because we're looking at a one minute chart. Right. I really don't want to look at just a one minute chart and a trade pull. Well, I mean, it's just in general, buying the pullet, it's not, at least for me. Right, and it's also, you're right, it's different, right? The pattern's different because it's never come back to the level that it broke out from. It's always held a higher level, right? Right. That is, and that's if the pattern's different. I mean, you know, at, 
at two, it held higher. At three, it held higher. At four, it held higher. And now at six, it's finally coming back to four, the four level, right? Right. And so that becomes harder to buy it. Yeah. And I did, and you know, I pat myself on the back, and then I sold it like 10 cents higher. So that's something I, I actually cannot do. Um, well, it's also, go back to that. I mean, it's not like it exploded from four. I mean, it went up. You can actually see on the tape here, though. You can definitely see on the tape. The bids were really stepping in, and it, it was like, okay, this is definitely the spot to add. And I, I feel like that's something I need to get a lot better at, and I hate that I just sold it immediately and didn't really just treat it as a Did lot. Did you get better. flat? Did you get flat? Or no, just, just that lot. I, I, I just botched that lot, and I sold it like 10 cents higher. And then it played. I did play the breakout. So, um... Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, so basically I'm saying that a lot of my, my ads were a little, a little bit too aggressive, so I should be waiting a little bit more um, for a real catalyst. Usually it's going to be on the tape um, to get in. And a lot of my ads that I probably didn't show here were, uh, they were just like whipped out and I had to get back in. And then basically what I numbered here were the ones that I should have done. That I should have. These are the ones that did work. So to me, I could have made a lot more money if I stayed in here at number six, as I would have had double the upside that I started with, and if I had more size on the play. Yeah. That was my review. Anyone have any questions? All right. Um, I'm going to finish up here. You guys can all go. I'm just going to finish up and talk to myself in this room. Don't <laughs> shut it off. Um, thanks, Alex. Sure. All right, just give us one minute to. I want to finish off with a little bit. Can you bring my uh, PowerPoint back up again, Chris? All right, so let's get you out of here with uh, this thought, which is. So these were, a lot of these are examples of, of, of trades to hold, and the big thing is you don't want to be a wuss. When you start to see the intraday fundamentals, the tape, and uh, the long-term technicals in your favor, you have to understand your job is to be aggressive. And your job in that case is to hold. All right, so get in there and hold. Now. Obviously, after we showed you these plays, uh, the question for you is, so now you're just going to be rich, right? Now you have a couple plays in your playbook, and you can all go retire to some beautiful tropical island, but that's not the case. And the reason for that, the reason why that's not the case, this very interesting explanation. We call it combinatorial explosion, and I'll explain what it is. Best way to get a sense of the strange power of a combinatorial explosion is to imagine folding a piece of paper in two, making the paper twice as thick. Now repeat the process a hundred times. How thick is the paper now? Well, most people tend to guess in the range of a few inches to a few yards. In fact, the thickness would stretch 800,000 billion times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Just in a recent rim trade that I actually made, and I discussed this when I went to go visit Indiana University, we showed an example of a rim trade, and just as one trade, I was thinking about these things in the middle of the trade. The time of the day, the strength of the overall market on a longer term time frame, the strength of technology stock, how quickly rim dropped to 48, is there buying on the tape near 48, the strength of the market intraday, fresh news in rim, volume in rim intraday, volume of the market intraday, volatility of rim recently, Trading is a skill. You have to keep working at your trading game. These plays that we've actually showed to you that you can co-opt, you're going to have to actually work at them, see if you can make them your own, build the skill to be able to, to actually trade them. You're going to want to get better every day. Build from your strengths. There are certain setups that are your favorites. Trade more of them. Trade them with more size. That's the way that you make more money while you're slowly trying to add certain trades. For example, in this market, 
you really want to try and slowly add ETF, not slowly in this case, you want to add ETF trading, you want to add the ability to actually trade the market like Shark did in his first trade to your trading. It's not just individual stocks right now, okay? It's ETFs, it's market stocks. The great thing is that you will get better. This is one of my favorite quotes. I know of no more encouraging fact than the unquestionable ability of man to elevate his life by conscious endeavor. Trading is really the greatest challenge that most people will have to themselves as a person. It tests how good you are individually. All right. Uh, for those of you watching at home, we, Alex was actually talking about this. Um, we uh, will offer you guys who actually came here and listened this 14-day um, free trial of the SMB Radar. Just uh, shoot us an email, um, and you can see it actually on our website. Um, if you have any questions, please send me an email, send us a tweet at SMB Capital, or come visit us on our blog. And in our blog, uh, we share tons of stories and free trading advice, stuff that's happening to us in real time um, for you. And it's at SMBtraining.com blog. So thanks everyone for coming and visiting. And anyone has any questions, just shoot me an email. Thanks a lot.